guys, it's Cindy AK Disney Queen. I'm coming to you today with part of my planner series about how I go about planning my Disney trips. And so today we're going to talk about, let me find it, we're going to talk about Epcot and my priorities for Epcot. Now in one of my last videos I talked about how we were going to change the way we actually visit the parks and I showed you my planner and um, I showed you, uh, I talked about the fact that um, we want to slow down and really enjoy the parks and see things and do things a little differently, things that we've not done before, and just take our time and enjoy the trip. Um, so, this is going to be a little different from the last time. I thought I would show you a little bit more in depth of what's in my actual planner. Um, this is not a planner that I take with me because it is huge, <laughs> but it keeps all of my information and it helps me go about planning how I want to do my trip and scheduling everything. And so I have a listing of the rides. I have a map of the ride. And then, um, thanks to some friends, I have an updated uh, map that shows a little bit about Christmas time around. I noticed the other day when I was looking at my, my maps. Now you guys tell me if this has changed because I think it actually has. Um, I noticed that it used to be a time where they would put the actual date on the map for the year, um, the time of year you were going and I didn't notice that this time around and that kind of uh, threw me off a little bit. But um, someone, one of my friends recently went and she sent me a map um, so that I could kind of keep updated. And so what I do is I kind of go through my list. I also have this little printout sheet that I got online um, that has all of the um, names of all of the rides. And then it, like for little people, it even tells you how tall you have to be in order to ride that ride. So I'm just gonna go down the list and kind of give you um, an idea of what we would like to do on this trip. So for instance, I think I'm gonna take this out so that I can uh, show it to you a little bit better. And I'll fix that later. Some of my pages came out. Okay, so this shows Epcot. And it says um, World Showcase. But I'm gonna start down um, at the bottom, at the bottom, ah, at the bottom, and kind of run through some of the areas that's not part of World Showcase. And I'm gonna say World Showcase for last because that's actually my favorite part. So, for example, um, it says Advanced Training Lab. Now, guys, I don't know anything about the Advanced Training Lab. So is that something that I would be interested in doing or is that mostly for little people? You have to, I'm gonna have to do some research and you're gonna have to tell me because that's definitely something I've never done at Epcot before. Um, I know Circle of Life has actually closed so that is, um, that, that is no longer available to, uh, to go and see. But um, uh, another thing, Disney's Pixar Short Film Festival. I don't think I've ever been in the building to see that. So is that something that I could maybe see? And that, once again, that would be trying something different and checking out areas of the park that we don't usually walk, um, go and see. As far as Fast Pass, if by chance we are able to get Fast Pass, I would say my top priorities for Fast Pass would be um, either test tracks or soaring. And what we did the last time is we actually went in early that morning when the park opened and went straight to test tracks and we still stayed in them. I think we were in line for maybe 20 minutes. Um, and we had a fast pass for Frozen. Um, because if you understand the way the system is set up at Epcot is a little different than it is at Magic Kingdom, so you can't just get four fast pass um, for your favorite rides all at once um, at Epcot. There are two different tiers, and I'm sure it's going to change even more as more of the new rides start to come to Epcot. 
Um, so I do know Soren is one of those ones that if you get Soren, you can't get test tracks and you also can't get um, frozen sing-along if you pick Soren or test tracks. So you kind of have to decide. Um, a good trick is if you have the ability to go more than one day, you could pick test tracks, fast pass for one day, and then you could pick Soren's fast pass for another day. But other than that, the best way to go about doing that is to actually get there first thing in the morning and go straight to either one, the one that you don't have a fast pass for. So for me, the three that would be the most important for us to get, um, well two actually, would be Soren and Test Tracks. So for me, that would mean going to the parks on two different days. Um, our plan is to get a hopper so we can hop around, but we would still need to get those fast pass on two different days in order to, to actually get them. Um, so if we have a fast pass for those, then my next priorities would be um, to go to seas, um, the seas with Nemo and friends. Um, because I love the little riding in the little shell um, and I love <laughs> seeing Nemo the little uh, the little water show that you see as you go into the building uh, let's see spaceship earth now I do know that they were talking about spaceship earth was going to be going through some um, changes and I don't know if that'll be open at the time that we go but if it is my best suggestion and this is what we do we either um, get a fast pass for it or try later in the day um, and again always check the app on your phone to see if something is available because that was one thing we found out when we went um, in 2017 was some things that we had a pass for we actually didn't need a pass for because because of the way the crowds were set up um, a lot of people flood uh, the um, uh, future world first thing in the morning because that is actually open world showcase doesn't open until much later <clears throat> so once the crowds have started to move back towards world, Sh world showcase when it opens and i believe it is 11 o'clock don't hold me on that because it's been a while since i've been um, i wonder does my map show it i have to look and i'll put it i'll insert it in here once they all kind of move back to that area it clears out a little bit in the front so sometimes you can catch things once the crowd has started to move back to world showcase um, and I'm not really sure about the crowds at Christmas time. I think it depends on when you go. And we would be going <clears throat> before Thanksgiving. So I'm really, really hoping, unless it's Star Wars weekend opening, that um, it won't be as crowded because it won't be Christmas time. It won't be Thanksgiving. And it won't be um, when everybody and their mama decides to come <laughs> for Star Wars. But again, we don't know the actual date. So as we get closer to time, then that will kind of tell us. Okay, so Mission Space, no. Won't be getting on Mission Space. Um, we'll be doing the Seas with Nemo and Friends. We'll be doing Soren if I can. We'll be doing Spaceship Earth if I can. Um, we'll definitely be doing Test Tracks if I can. We went to see Turtle Talk with Crush a few years um, when we went in 2017. And unless my daughter, um, my youngest daughter is going this time, whereas before it was my oldest daughter. Unless my daughter really wants to go see um, Turtle um, Talk with Crush, we'll probably skip that this time. Um, another thing I have not seen at Epcot is Leave a Legacy. Um, so again, these are things that we would normally kind of brush past or ignore completely because we were trying to get to the rides. But my priority this time is a little different. So it's not to necessarily get to all of the rides. If I get on them, good. If I don't, then, you know, it's okay because I want to see some of the things that I've never seen before. And one of the things I talked about in seven things I've never done at Epcot was I said that we've 
never done like one of the behind the scene behind the scenes tours and so I thought maybe a good one to do would be behind the scenes which is at living with the land and so um, if we if it's possible that might be something we do a little differently this time and if we do that I don't know that I would necessarily get in line to see living with the land because I will be seeing the behind scenes portion of living with the land and I've seen the I've been on the ride several times so if that doesn't happen that's not a big deal okay I know that this is controversial not everybody loves figment I don't know why you don't love the purple dragon but you don't but that's okay I like figment I think figment is cute I have actually seen the original figment ride and that was good too but be honest it's been so long that I don't really remember it as well as the new version of Figment. And I like Figment. So I will ride Journey into Your Imagination with Figment. And I probably won't need a fast pass for it. So that's an easy one to get on. And even if you're in the kids will love it, even if the adults don't love it. And I, they'll just love it because it's funny. We actually rode it one evening. And we were the only people, I'm telling you, we were the only people in the building. And that's kind of sad, but in a lot of ways, it was fun. We had like the whole cart, um, uh, like each scene that we went through, when you open the doors and go to another scene, we were actually the only ones in there. Now, there were times where it was kind of eerie that we were the only ones in there. But it was fun, because it was like we had our own private tour of Figment's uh, ride. And so I would get on it again. And again, it's not one of those things I think I would need a fast pass for. So at any time, I could probably go up and get it. But if it looks like it's going to be crowded, then I would check to see if it's possible to get a fast pass for it. Because it is a fast pass ride. Um, and then I can bypass some of the um, people who may just go there just because they need something to do. Um, I do know when it rains that you will see people start to load up to go to Figment just because they're trying to get out of the rain. So that pretty much takes care of what I would see in the Future World section. Now let's get to my favorite part of Epcot and that is World Showcase. I love World Showcase and I think I love it because it's like being able to travel to a different world in one day. <laughs> Several different <laughs> places in one day. So uh, some priority for us would be, and I'm gonna look at my list that has all of my rides because I, I have it broke down to um, Mexico. Um, there's the Grand Fiesta Tour starring um, the three Caballeros. Um, and they had updated that and so we will get on it if there's not a lot of people and I've been there several times where there wasn't a lot of people usually in the evening and my daughter hasn't seen it since it's been updated so if she would like to ride that we would definitely get on that um, frozen ever after it just depends on if one if we can get there where because I'm not necessarily believing that I can get a fast pass for it so to be in the standby line it needs to be first thing when it opens at Epcot in the morning and if I'm not mistaken even though it's in World Showcase it actually opens when Epcot opens in the morning so if you can if you're not interested in getting on test tracks or if you have a fast pass for test tracks or soaring I would suggest going and rising riding frozen ever after first thing in the morning as soon as you get in the park china reflections of china is available which is a movie about china it's probably not on the top of my priority list um but i do want to explore the pavilions um and so i will probably pop into china just to look around germany i did say this time in my seven things that i've never done at epcot that i really would like to check out Germany a little bit more especially um, um, some of the shops uh, uh, and maybe this year 
would be the year to buy something from Germany to remind me of when I lived in Germany. Because that's one thing I, I don't know if I said it in my video. Um, each time that we've ever gone to Epcot, we always buy something from one of the lands um, to represent our trip. I've gotten a blanket from Mexico. My husband got a poncho from Mexico. Um, I got a necklace a couple of years ago from the UK pavilion. Um, maybe even get some UK snacks that I know that they have in the UK pavilion or snacks from one of the other countries. So that is something to do. Italy is probably my favorite land at World Showcase. And it's not, it doesn't have any rides. I just love the way it looks. And I love Italian food. Um, and so Italy just holds a special place. There's a fountain. I don't know the official name for it. There's a fountain in the Italy Pavilion that my husband and I take a picture at every year. And so I have to stop in Italy. Then there's the United States um, American Adventure. And I've already said in the seven... Um, things I've never done that I really would like to hear the Liberty um, singers uh, this time around and it'll be Christmas time so they'll be singing Christmas songs and so I'm really looking forward to that of course you have to stop in Japan um, I think that the lady who does the little candy sculptures is still there and she has been there like forever unless something has changed in the last year so we always try to go see what she's up to and doing. I think one year she actually handed us one of her pieces after it was done. Um, another thing, something that could have been on my seven things I've never done list, there's the little pearl um, presentation. Uh, I've always said, thought about getting a pearl and I've never done that. So hmm, that could be something that we do. Morocco. Morocco is on the list this time to actually try a snack at Morocco because we've eaten snacks at Italy. My daughter got something. We always get a turkey leg when we're in the um, United States Pavilion. Um, my son has gotten snacks like my husband's got wasabi peas in I think Japan. Um, I don't think we've ever gotten anything in Mexico. Uh, so Morocco is on a list of places I, I kind of fell in love with the Morocco pavilion the last time we were there and it's just really neat and you kind of once you walk through the building and walk through the little um, uh, almost like alleyways it's almost like you are in another country it just gave me that type of feeling so I really would like to try one of their snacks there. And I think someone posted in my video um, a suggestion. So I have to go back and look at that. Then there is France. And we always stop in France. We either stop and look at the, per um, smell the perfume. Um, the last time I was there, I got the little macaroon ice cream snack from France. Um, but this time I'm going to make a point of stopping and watching the film in France. So that is at the top of the list. Then there is Canada. Oh, no, United Kingdom. How can I forget the United Kingdom? That's like one of my favorite places to, it's at the top of my bucket list, bucket list of places to see. So, United Kingdom, um, I'd like to see if I can't take a picture with Belle. I think that's that she's in the United Kingdom. And I can't remember where I said Snow White was. But I know I want to try to find Snow White and take a picture with Snow White. I've taken a picture with um, Mary Poppins and I've taken a picture with Alice. So I want a picture with Belle in her blue dress and a picture of Snow White. So, Canada. I've never been in the shops in Canada. So Canada is a place that this time I think I want to slow down and really walk around and check out Canada. Um, I think that is about it. I think I've covered everything. I know that not this year, but in a couple of years, there's going to be a ride with, um, oh my gosh, why can't I think of the mouse name? And it's not Mickey Mouse. How are they letting another mouse in that's not Mickey Mouse? Anyway, Ratatouille. The Ratatouille ride is coming to France, but I know that's a couple of years down the line. And I'm actually more excited about that than the Galaxies. Galactica something 
sorry guys, I've never watched a movie. And in the trailer that I saw of it, don't get mad at me, but I thought it was kind of stupid. Um, well, it wasn't my cup of tea. I'm not going to call it stupid, but it wasn't my cup of tea. And my understanding is this is like a really, well, this is like the Tron ride at Magic Kingdom. I'm not excited about that at all. Um, and the Battlestar Galactica, whatever, Galactica, whatever it's called. I guess I'm going to have to do my research to find out what it's called. Um, I'm not really excited about that. The one, the, where the Universe of Energy, um, ride used to be. So, that is my priorities for Epcot. Really my priority, bottom line, my priority for Epcot is to walk around, enjoy the pavilions. Um, if I get on the Fast Pass rides, I do. If I don't, it's not going to be a big deal. Um, the only bonus thing that we are still considering doing at Epcot is... Um, the sit-down dinner with um, Mickey, Chip, and Dale at the, um, oh my goodness, the ride at Living with the, I mean, the restaurant at Living with the Land. I told you guys I can't talk today. I might be editing a bunch of stuff out of here. <laughs> um, one of our um, things that I used to do with my youngest daughter that's going on this trip is we would always take a picture in front of the garden grill. But we've never eaten at the Garden Grill. So, <clears throat> depending on how things go, uh, we may get a reservation <coughs> Excuse me for the Garden Grill. So if we do that, that would be something that we've never done before that I would really be excited about. And we will probably do the breakfast, which would get us into the park a little bit earlier. And I think then, as a um, strategy, I would maybe do that and then leave from there and hike it over to <coughs> either ride Soren, which, as you know, is in the same building, or uh, depending on how early it is, I would take an opportunity to go and get on Frozen Sing Along. I mean, What's it called? See, sometimes it's good to have notes. Frozen ever after. <laughs> so, that is my plans for uh, Epcot. So, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. I do know at Christmas time that they do have festival, festival, and I will talk about that in a separate video because I'm do, still doing some research on that. <coughs> Excuse me. So, if you have any ideas, please do not hesitate to tell me. This trip is going to be so different, and I'm planning it so differently than I usually plan a video. That it's kind of got me a little off my game. And so, any suggestions are appreciated. So, until I see you the next time, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you have some suggestions, please put them in the comments below. I promise I will talk to you. Um, if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? I hit 90 subscribers this morning. So, I am so excited. I don't even know what to do with myself. I think that... Um, <coughs> I think that I'm just in shock that there are people actually watching my videos and enjoying them. So, that could be it. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Join the family and subscribe. If you want to know when the videos are going to go up, please hit that notification bell. Um, I've switched things around a little bit so you're not getting them on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So the best thing to do is to actually, um, hit that bell so that you know when they do go up. Um, and so until I see you the next time, have a blessed day. Bye.